Haribo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Now I'm in the now I'm in the chat. Yeah. I, uh, will you start, please? We're ready to begin. Yeah. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, we're reading Nectar of Instruction, verse number 9. Vaikuntas Janito Varamadu Puri Tatra Pirasotsavad Vrindaranyam Udarapani Ramanat Tatra Govardhana Radha Kundam Ihapi Gokulapate Premaan Rita Plavanat Kuryad Asya Virajato Giritate Sevam Vivekinaka. Okay, we won't ask you to read this. We'll just go ahead, read the translation. Okay. All right, so in text number eight, we were hearing about how to practice this uh, Raganuga Bhakti, and it was mentioned they should go to Vrindavan and, or Mathura and live there in Vrindavan or Mathura, Mathura district, which means also Vrindavan. So there are different places where we could live to chant the holy name. So Rupa Goswami is analyzing the merits of each place. There's a hierarchy. One place is better than another. Sometimes people think, oh, everything is the same, it's all one. That's mayavadi, impersonalism. It's one, but it's also different. 
There's a difference. The difference is some places are more holy, more pure than another. Some places are more suited for chanting Hare Krishna than others. So Rupa Goswami begins to analyze the place, he says, uh, spiritual world is definitely better than the material world. Material world is a place of birth and death, but in the spiritual world everyone is a devotee and they're living there eternally. Everyone in the spiritual world is a devotee. They have spiritual bodies, they don't suffer birth and death. So there are many more living entities in the spiritual world than in the material world. Spiritual world is three times the size of the material world. So the spiritual world is definitely superior to the material world. So then Rupa Goswami says, however, Mathura is spiritually better than Vaikuntha. So Mathura is famous because this is the place where Lord Krishna appeared. It's called the, the, the Janmastan, the birthplace of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna selected Mathura and at, at the very birth site that was in the prison house of Kamsa. So there was a temple built there at that place but then after some time the Mohammedans came and they built a mosque there. So after building the mosque, then the, later on, more recently, the, the, the Hindu people, they built a, a nice big, they built a big temple there. There's a big temple there today, the birthplace of Krishna. So Mathura is also famous because Lord Krishna came after, although Krishna took birth in Mathura, he did not stay there. He went to Vrindavan, Goku to perform his pastimes. But then he came back. To Mathura. He came back, Kamsa had invited him to come back to Mathura. Kamsa sent Akrura to go to Vrindavan to bring Krishna and Balaram to Mathura. And Krishna and Balaram agreed to come and broke the hearts of the gopis to, for them to leave Vrindavan. Mm. 
but Krishna came there and Kamsa had arranged for some activities, some events to take place. First of all, there was a big elephant there, a very nasty, fierce elephant that tried to attack Krishna. So Krishna killed that elephant. And then Kamsa had arranged a wrestling match for, for Krishna. And Krishna and Balaram had to fight very powerfully built, big, huge, strong wrestlers. And all the cowherd boys and Nanda Mahara, all the people had come from Vrindavan to watch everything. So they, when they saw the contest, they thought this is not very fair, that these wrestlers are so big and strong compared to Krishna and Balaram. But Krishna and Balaram defeated these wrestlers. So then Krishna, then he had to deal with Kamsa. And Krishna had a fight with Kamsa and killed Kamsa. And then Kamsa's brothers all came and attacked Krishna. And, and Lord Balaram killed all the brothers of Kamsa. So all of this took place in Mathura. Of course, in Mathura, there were many, many devotees in Mathura, and the people, the, as described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, how Krishna came to Mathura. All the ladies wanted to see Krishna and Balaram. So Mathura is a very holy place and great many devotees there and wonderful there's also a temple, nice temple there. Mathura was established millions of years ago at the time of Lord Ramachandra. His brother Shatrugna came there. There was some demon named Lavanasura who was giving trouble to all the sages there. So the, so the sages all came to Ayodhya and they requested Lord Ramachandra, please help us. So Lord Ramachandra told his younger brother Shatrugna, you go there, fight this demon, kill him. So Shatrugna said, okay, he said, I will go, but he said, can I take that deity of Lord Varaha, which you have? Lord Rama had one deity of Lord Varaha, which he had taken, he'd taken the deity from Ravan when he'd gone to Lanka.
Ravan had taken the deity away from Kuvera, the treasurer of the demigods. And Kuvera had been given the deity by Lord Brahma. So it's a very ancient, very old deity. That deity is established there in Mathura. So Lord uh, Shatrugna went there, he killed the demon and he made Mathura the capital of that area. So that was in Treta Yuga, a very long time ago. So Mathura is a certainly a holy place because Lord Krishna performed pastimes there and he also took his birth there. But there's some places even superior to Mathura. And one place superior to Mathura are the, the forests of Vrindavan. There are actually 12 forests of Vrindavan. And so Krishna performed many pastimes in the forests of Vrindavan. Every day he'd go with the cowherd boys in the forest. He'd take the cows and they would play games there. Sometimes demons would come and attack them. One time Lord Brahma took away all the cows and cowherd boys. So many pastimes took place in the forest of Vrindavan. But the most famous of all the pastimes was Krishna's Rasa Lila. Krishna's Rasa Lila is pastime coming from the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, there are no demons, so Krishna doesn't have to kill any demons. But but he 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 gives a lot of he has to he has he still performs pastimes with his devotees, and the way in which he pleases his devotees is by performing rasa lila. So Krishna performed Rasa Lila different places, different times, with different groups of gopis. So sometimes Krishna will have Rasa Lila, there will be many gopis there. Some gopis are from the time of Lord Ramachandra. When Lord Ramachandra was in exile, he'd gone in the forest of Dandakaranya. And at that time the great sages had saw Lord Ramachandra. And these sages were all attracted to Lord Ramachandra. They wanted to enjoy pastimes with him. They wanted to have a, a loving relationship with him. And 
and they saw Lord Ramachandra. He was so handsome, so strong. He attracted the minds. He didn't just attract the minds of the women, but he attracted the minds even of these great sages. So these these sages asked Lord Ramachandra if they could have, um, if they could enjoy um, uh, loving pastimes with him. So Lord Ramachandra said, "Well, not in this lifetime, because I promised only one wife." No, Lord Ramachandra, he was in Ashatriya, but he, Ashatriyas, they could have many wives, but Lord Ramachandra chose only to have one wife. Of course, Lord Ramachandra's wife is Mother Sita, who is his eternal consort. So Lord Ramachandra told them, this life I cannot satisfy your desire. But next life, if you take birth as gopis in Vrindavan, if you take birth in the cowherd families of Vrindavan as gopis, then in your next life you can become my consort. So some of the gopis, not all the gopis, but some of the gopis, they were the sages from the forest who had seen Lord Ramachandra. And then there were other sages who were, in their previous life, they were the personified Vedas. The personified Vedas wanted to understand how the Lord performs his pastimes. They wanted to see the, the spiritual nature of the pastimes of the Lord. So they took birth as gopis and they also took part in the Rasa Lila. Now some gopis, they are eternally liberated. They come from the spiritual world. But there are some gopis who are just becoming perfect and they're coming and they may be taking part for the first time in Rasa Lila. And they're new gopis, they're just going back to Godhead. Maybe in the past they had been conditioned souls and they'd been in the material world, but somehow they had become liberated and they have become gopis and now they're taking part in Rasa Lila. They're getting trained to go back to Godhead. So in this way there were many different groups of gopis. It said when Lord, Lord Krishna, sometimes he would dance uh, with the gopis, uh, he would have one pair of gopis, the, you know Krishna would expand himself and he would expand himself so that one pair of gopis would be with each Krishna, two gopis for each Krishna.
Huh? Yeah, for every two gopis there would be one Krishna. Yeah. Yeah, there were many gopis. But there was one gopi that was Srimati Radharani. She had Krishna. She didn't share Krishna with another gopi. So the forests of Vrindavan, they're very special because the Rasa Lila pastimes took there, took place there. But then Rupa Goswami said, even more important, even higher than the forest of Vrindavan is Govardhan Hill. So he says that the Govardhan Hill was raised by the hand of Lord Krishna. Of course, Lord Krishna used the Govardhan Hill to protect the people of Vrindavan from the wrath of Indra. The Govardhan Hill became the umbrella to shelter all the people and the animals of Vrindavan under the, under the hill when Indra poured heavy rain. So this pastime of Krishna picking up Govardhan Hill not only took away the pride of Indra, but it did other things as well. <coughs> one of the things, one of the things which happened was Krishna could be with all the gopis for seven days and nights. <coughs> the gopis were always finding difficulty to get time just to see Krishna, to be with Krishna. Because they're not married, and so in, in the cult, in the in the in this in the village, in the culture, in the cultural place, young men and young women are not allowed to mix together without marriage. So Krishna arranged, it was arranged when Krishna picked up the Govardhan Hill, all the gopis could come and they could be there with Krishna for seven days and nights. Of course, not only the gopis, but all the people of Vrindavan and all the cows and everyone, they were all under the Govardhan Hill. So this was very satisfying to the Krishna and to the gopis. Then Govardhan Hill is described by the gopis. They describe Govardhan Hill as the best of all the devotees of Lord Hari.
There are many devotees of Har Lord Hari. There's many devotees called Hari Das, like Maharaj Yudhisthira. But Govardhan Hill is called Harida Savarya, the best of the best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. When Lord Chaitanya came to Govardhan Hill and when he came to Vrindavan and he saw Govardhan Hill, he was in ecstasy. And when he would circumambulate, he would walk around the Govardhan Hill, he would re recite the verse which the gopis sang, glorifying Govardhan Hill. Ahantyaram adrir abala harida savarya yat rama krishna charanas parasha pramoha Like this, uh, the gopis, they sing, they sing this beautiful song, you know, they sing songs about Krishna and they sing also this beautiful verse about Govardhan Hill. They say Govardhan Hill is the best of all the devotees because he provides places for many pastimes of Krishna and his devotees. In the, in the times of Lord Krishna, there were waterfalls on Govardhan Hill. And that water would provide water for the devote, for the cows and for the cowherd boys. They could drink the water and they could bathe in the water. There was nice grass growing on the Govardhan hill which was good for the cows. And there were also fruit trees on the Govardhan Hill providing fruit, food for the cowherd boys. And there were caves on the hill also where Krishna and the cowherd boys could, they could take shelter from the rain or from the heat. The, stone, the stones on the Govardhan hill would be very warm during the, co during the cold winter. And during the hot summer, the stones would be cool on the feet. So Govardhan Hill performed many wonderful services for the pleasure of Krishna and his devotee. And the devotees enjoyed their pastimes there. So Govardhan Hill is very special, even greater than the forest of Vrindavan. But there is somewhere even better than the Govardhan Hill, and that is Radhakund. Mm. 
So when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Vrindavan, he was asking the devotees, where is Radha Kund? So Lord Chaitanya was showing to all the devotees that this is a very important place. But nobody knew where is the Radha Kund. So then Lord Chaitanya showed everyone where is the Radha Kund. Lord Chaitanya found there was one village called Aristagram. And Lord Chaitanya knew that Arist uh, this is named after the place where Krishna killed the demon Aristasura. Aristasura was in the form of a bull, a male cow. So when Krishna killed this Aristasura, then Radharani and the gopis, they told Krishna, don't you come near us, we don't want you coming near, you're sinful, you've killed a cow, you have to purify yourself. So they told Krishna, you have to go and bathe in all the holy rivers to purify yourself. So Lord Krishna said to the gopis, oh, do you want me to bathe in all the holy rivers? That's, uh, that's okay, I, I'm not going to go there, I'm going to tell them to come here. So Lord Krishna then ground his heels in the ground and when he ground his heels in the ground then all these divine person, divine ladies came carrying pots of water. Uh, he, he, put, uh, his feet on the he used his heels, he dug his heels into the ground. So then the gopis saw all these ladies, they said, who are all you? So one lady said, I am the Ganga, and another lady said, I am Yamuna, and another lady said, I am Saraswati, another lady said, I am Narmada, another lady said, uh, I am Kaveri. Then in this way, she saw all the holy rivers had come to bring water. Just like when we take bath, we can call all the holy rivers, we can chant a mantra. Ganga cha yamuna ye chaiva godavari sarasatim narmada sindhu kaveri jalismin sanadim kuru. We're calling the names of the holy rivers to come. So they all came when Lord Krishna was told, like, when he told them like that, they all came. So in this way Lord Krishna created Shamakund.
But then Lord Krishna said to the gopis, now you all have to take back because you have been associated, you're connected with this demon. He was, although he was a cow, he was a demon. So you also have to purify yourself. So the gopis, they, they thought, all right, we will get water. But at, first of all, they, they used their bangles and they dug a cone. They made a big hole to make for putting the water. But there was no but there was no water, it was just a hole in the ground. So then they said, Radharani said, all right, we will bring the water from Manasaganga. So then they made a line, all the gopis, and they all went, went all the way to Manasaganga, and they were bringing the water, carrying pots from Manasaganga. So Lord Krishna saw how they were sweating, it was very hard work, they had to carry the water quite a distance. So Lord Krishna took compassion on them and said, you don't have to do it like that. He said, I will share my waters, you can have also the waters from the holy places. Because all the holy rivers had come there for Lord Krishna, so they told Srimati Radharani, yeah, we can provide water for your kund also. So in this way, Radha kund and Shama kund appeared for the pastimes of Srimati Radharani and Lord Krishna. So it's a very special place. When Lord Chaitanya found out the Radhakund and Shamakund, then he saw it was just some rice fields. There had be it had become two rice fields. But there was still some water there in the middle where the lake was, where the kund had been before. So Lord, so Lord Chaitanya went there and began to take his bath there in the middle of the rice field. The peop other people, village people, were very surprised. They thought, oh, who is this sannyasi? He's taking bath in the rice field. They thought, very strange. And after Lord Chaitanya took his bath there, then he took the mud from there and he used the mud to mark his tea like all over his body. So this Radhakund was very, very important to Lord Chaitanya. Now, today people come to Radhakund and often they are not followers of Gaudiya Vaishnavism.
often they are not followers of Lord Chaitanya. They're just simply devotees of Krishna, but they don't know about Lord Chaitanya. So they come to Radhako and they think, oh, this is the place of Krishna's pastimes. They do not understand the position of Srimati Radharani. They do not understand the importance of Srimati Radharani in the pastimes of Lord Krishna. This is something known only by the followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, without coming in the line from Lord Chaitanya and through the Goswamis of Vrindavan, we will not properly understand the significance of Radhakund. But that Radhakund is even more special than Govardhan Hill. Because this is the place of the highest ecstasy, the highest rasa in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So, we see, for example, at the birth time of Lord Krishna, then Krishna is here with his mother and father, Vasudev and Devaki. So, that is Vatsalya Ras, that is parental Ras. And then when we look at Krishna's pastime, Rasa Lila with the gopis, then we see that Radharani was not so happy. Then sometimes she would go away, she wouldn't like to dance with all these other gopis. So there was, there was some, some rasa there, but it was not so pleasing to Srimati Radharani. And similarly, under the Govardhan Hill, Krishna is with the, the gopis and so on, but, you know, many people are there. But when she comes to Radha Kund, it's very private, very special. She only brings her very, very close friends. And Krishna may come with only two or three of his friends. And they have to stand far away, they have to stand on the other side, of this, far away, the other side of Shamakund, away from Radhakund. So it was at Radhakund where Krishna was enjoying the most pleasure in the association, in the association of Radharani. So that's why the Shraddha Kund is so special.
Okay, are there any questions? We should understand that Krishna is a person and that he takes pleasure in the association of his devotees. The, the, the gopis, their mode is to give pleasure to Krishna and they give him pleasure by dancing with him. We see in the material world how people like to go dancing. They enjoy to dance with each other. So Krishna also enjoys to dance with the gopis. Understand that Krishna is a person and he has dealing, he has activities. So when we dance in the temple, when we have kirtans in our programs and we dance, we, are, we should think, I'm dancing for the pleasure of Krishna. Our mood should be to give pleasure to Krishna. You understand? No, no, it's not equal to chanting the holy name. Chanting the holy name is, it says the, Gan, the water of the Ganges will purify after a long time. But the holy name can purify you immediately. But you have to chant the holy name with quality. Okay. Когда Акула, он же пал и пал, потому что его как бы вот перебой. И у меня вопрос, как можно было то, что 
<laughs> yeah, well, Akrura, but they say Akrura, the gopis were not happy with Akrura because he took Krishna away from them. So we should act to please the gopis, to please the devotees of Krishna. Don't do anything to make the, the devotees of Krishna unhappy with us. Mm, if we can please the devotees, then Krishna is pleased. But if the devotees are not pleased, then also Krishna is not pleased. If, if all the devotees were unhappy, not happy, Prabhupada would get upset also that, you know, all the devotees, they're, so un, they're not all complaining, you know, what is going on, why you can't manage properly. And Prabhupada would be upset if the devotees were not happy. He would probably like to see the devotees satisfied, happy, no complaints. That's a good sign. Of course, when the devotees complain, this is often the neophyte tendency, that they can only find fault and criticize other people. When devotee becomes more advanced, then they will glorify, they'll, they'll praise the other devotees. Hmm. So it's important for us to try to please the devotee. Say by serving Mahatsevam Dwadam Mahur Vimukte Tamo Jwaram Yoshitam Sangi Sangam. If we serve the devotees, the Mahatmas, the devotees are all Mahatmas. If we give service to them, it opens the doors to liberation. But if we just serve our own senses, then it takes us into hell. So always try to think about what we're doing and try to act in such a manner that it's also pleasing and satisfying to the devotees. Okay, any other questions? Чтобы заработать на кале, чтобы заработать деньги, вот так вот, вот так вот приходили. 
peers uh, and not to work for Kali. Just uh, maybe it's better to uh, make yagyas for Lakshmi, no, not uh, Vishnu Lakshmi yagyas, but only for Lakshmi, and not to work for Kali. Uh, what is the proper way to be? Well, If you yeah, if your yaga is done like that just to make money, it's not very good. That's not a very pure yagya. If but if you're going to work, honestly, you, if we use the results for Krishna. That's not Kali. Prabhupada, Prabhupada had the devotees go to work, take jobs. And he, he writes in a purport, in the, in the, in the, I think it's 14th chapter, uh, in, the, in the Bhagavad Gita, in one purport, Prabhupada writes that, the dev devotees who are working in an office or in a factory said they're actually in the renounced order of life because they utilize their, month, their earnings for Krishna's service. So Prabhupada did not object to devotees working, he encouraged them. But if you just encourage people to do yagya, do yagya so you can make money, then this is not a very, this is a, this is just, you know, and that, this is just materialistic, it's not spiritual. You become like a karmi kandi brahman. You're just, you're just doing that, you know, and just encouraging people and their material goals. That the real yagya is the Sankirtan yagya. But if we just do Sankirtan yagya to get money, it's also not good. Yeah, if we're doing chanting, we may be doing Harinam, Sankirtan, and, but if we're just doing it to get the money, but then that is not pure chanting. Это вот 
You have this what? A reverent attitude. Uh Well, we have to see the Holy Dam. How to, how to, how to deal with this, how, I don't understand. Okay, for, well, first of all, when you come in the Holy Dam and you see garbage and so on, then you can clean it. That is service to the Holy Dam. Other people come and they're not respectful, they leave their garbage everywhere, then clean it. And teach people how to respect the Holy Dham. If they see you cleaning, then they will feel ashamed. And the, the bridge passy people, you say they're not very respectful to the holy place. Well, not all of them. Some people may be like that, but not all. Some of them are very, very devoted. It's, you have to understand the bridge passing people are very special people. They have a very, they have spontaneous, they have natural attraction for Krishna. One devotee was living in Jagannath Puri with Lord Chaitanya. And he wanted to go to Vrindavan. So Lord Chaitanya told him, oh, he said, okay, you go there. But he said, don't you associate with the bridge passing people. You are not on their level. So the same way, we are coming from outside of India. We are from a very fallen condition. Mm -hmm. 
but they're born in Mathura, in the, in the Brijbasi land. They are in that culture by birth. Uh, we cannot understand them. So don't try to understand them. But we are taught to respect them. Because they are residents of the Holy Dham, they are worthy of our respect. The first offense in the chanting of the holy name is to blaspheme the devotees. And the first offense in the holy in relation to the holy dam is to blaspheme the residents of the holy dam. So we should not try to find any fault with these people. We should appreciate them that they are so fortunate that they are born in the Holy Land. We cannot see these places with material vision. We cannot see these people with material vision. We had the, I, an earlier verse in this book, in this Upadesha Amrita, there was the one verse said, you may see faults in the body of the pure devotees. And Rupa Goswami said, just like people find fault with the water of the Ganga, They look at the water of the Ganga, they say, oh, it's not clean, it's not pure, it's got bubbles and foam and mud. But people in knowledge, they will bathe in the Ganga. In the same way, people with knowledge, they will offer their respect to the bridge passive people. But there are some people, they've come to Vrindavan, they're not bridge passive, they're not, they're not born there, but they've come there to Vrindavan. They are not really Brijbasi people. Okay, any qu other question? In the purport, Prabhupada talks about the Asta Kaliya Lila. Remembering the pastimes of Krishna. Prabhupada said, this is not for us. We are not on that level.
When some, some devotees would go to Radha Kund, Prabhupada would send another devotee, go there and bring them back. He didn't want them to go there. He said, so, bad, so many bad association is there. Just stay in our Krishna conscious society and associate with ISKCON devotees. You go to Radha Kund, if you go to Radha Kund and associate with the Babajis, you'll get very confused. There are so many sahaja, people who do things differently, very different from how we do it. You will learn all the bad things. One time Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada went there to Radha Kund and he gave a lecture. But when he gave lecture, he lectured on the Upanishads. So the Babaji's they came at, and at first when they heard but when they heard his speaking on Upanishad, then they got up and left. They didn't want to hear. They just wanted to hear Gopi Bhava, Gopi Lila. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati could understand the mentality of these Babajis. They are dressed like Raghunath Goswami or like Rupa Goswami. But their nature, their mind is not like that. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, to take Babaji, to live like that, he said, you must be at the level of Bhava. You must have achieved ecstatic love for Krishna. Any other question? How to conquer over a false ego? Yeah. By developing the pure ego. Pure ego means to understand I am the servant of Krishna. And we, sh we want to engage in the service of Krishna particularly by hearing and chanting and remembering. We can also pray to Lord Shiva because Lord Shiva is the controller of the false ego. Pray to Lord Shiva to help you 
overcome your false ego, which makes you think you are the doer or you are the controller. If you can take shelter of a senior devotee, then senior devotee can crush your false ego by constantly correcting you and chastising you. He can tell you how stupid you are, how you have no good qualities, how, are you, how you are a useless person. Do you like to hear this? Yes, right. So you have to hear this more and more. To get rid of your false ego, you have to be reminded more and more by a senior devotee. And you, you have to respect that person. You, you should thank him. Thank you, you're so kind to me. You're purifying me. But if you run away, if you think, oh, I don't want to meet him again, I don't like him, oh, he's always heavy, oh. Your false ego does not like it. It means you don't want to get rid of your false ego. Do you want to hear some more? You want me to tell you how, how you're so proud, you're so puffed up, you're so s s ignorant? <laughs> Вот, и вижу, и это 
происходит вот просто преданный даже вокруг. То есть у меня нет такого старшего преданного, который бы мне говорил, что я там ну, какая-нибудь плохая. У меня есть старший преданный, вот, наставник Кишира Прабу. Он как-то вот подбадривает меня на служение, там вот он говорит, давайте там, пойте. Вот. Ну как-то вот, знаете, помогает именно вот в служении. Служение очень помогает. Вот. А такого вот, чтобы мне постоянно говорили, такие вещи у меня пока нет. Just uh, tells me that you're you're proud, you're bad, or you like this or like that. Um, I just uh, around me are just uh, common devotees, but they do this for me. Uh, they allow me to see that I'm proud, or I just uh, want to enjoy, or like this. Yes, I have seen a devotee, but he always encouraging me. Krishna sir in service to Krishna he he doesn't just die like this. Yeah. Well, that's sometimes okay. Encourage you to do service to Krishna. But at the same time we may be doing service to Krishna and thinking I'm such a good devotee. service to Krishna but keeping a lot of false ego. So we have to we have to cultivate some humility and sometimes that's that's a that's a good test of our humility. It's good for us sometimes to be critical, maybe not all the time, of course not all the time, but sometimes it's certainly good for us to get some criticism. It said, it is the duty of the father to find the fault in the son. Even the son may be doing good, but the father's job is to find the fault. So Prabhupada said about his own spiritual master that he would often find the fault and criticize. Because without that criticism, we will never, t we will think, oh, I'm doing very well, I know, yeah, I'm very good. But Prabhupada always wanted more, do more, do better. If we're thinking, I've done enough. Then you, that's no good, that's not good. We should always think, I have not done enough. I need to do more. So long time I've been a devotee and I haven't purified myself yet. I've got so many attachments. What kind of devotee? I'm a useless devotee. So the more we advance, the more humble we become. And humility means we, we recognize our own faults, our own 
inabilities. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna does Kaviraj. He wrote, he is the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita. So he writes about himself. He said, I am lower than a worm in the stool. I am more sinful than Jagai and Madhai. Anyone who hears my name, they lose all their pious activity. And anyone who says who utter who says my name, they become sinful. And then he says, it's only the mercy of Lord Nityananda. That Lord Nityananda was his, his guru. He said, only, he said, only Lord Nityananda could deliver such a person as myself. So the duty of the spiritual master is to find the fault in the disciple. Prabhupada would say, because I have many faults, so I see faults in others. So, if somebody sees faults in you, you should thank them. Thank you very much. Taking away my false ego. Yes, we want you to do devotional service. Very good. But don't be proud. Be humble. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare Krishna. So, we will stop here today, can we? No more questions, eh? Okay, so thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.